Boy, man, when I wake up in the morning, I gotta have two things. I gotta have my coffee, and I gotta watch Trucker Rudy. Don't miss it. It's an eye opener. It will wake you up in the morning. <laughs> Me 18 wheels rolling down the road Nothing much to do when you're out here alone But listen to the radio till daylight breaks Hoping they play something that'll keep you awake The whole night trucker station came to an end But behold a new savior stepped right in Thank God for the satellite and radio For good trucking music there's a place to go Bill Mack and Cindy and Dave Nemo Thank God for the satellite Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this fine morning? I guess it's Monday, right? So have a look. Yes, it is Monday morning. So back to work for some of you, I guess. Or for me, it is back to work too. Since I slept the night, it's back to work. <laughs> Anyways, we are still here at the truck stop. Sun is, I guess, starting to peak up somewhere, and we are just about ready to roll. We just finished our pre trip here, and everything looks good. Seals is still intact, all our lights are working good. Yeah, so we are ready to roll. So let's get out of here and have ourselves a fantastic day. I hope you guys will have a good Monday too, because, uh, Monday sometimes sucks. <laughs> I remember back in the day when I used to have a factory job. Uh, Mondays sometimes were not the best. So I really hope you guys will have a good Monday. So with that, we'll get on the road here and have ourselves an awesome day. So let's get going. Here we are cruising along US 52. I saw this lake here to the left and I just thought, well, I'm going to show you guys this little bit here, you know. It's a nice little lake up here on US 52. We are about, I say about 36 miles away from Minot, North Dakota. Uh, 34 miles to go and then we make a left hand turn and mile or mile and a half down the road there, there's a truck stop in there. And Probably go stop her in there and have me some breakfast. I haven't had breakfast yet. The truck stop that I stayed at overnight, they were doing all kinds of construction as you guys probably saw in yesterday's video. And they got everything pretty much shut down, you know. They only had like one washroom where everybody had to go to, women, men, everybody to basically lock the door and yeah so that was uh, <laughs> pretty dusty in there as well and all that but I guess that comes with the construction right at least they were still open they were still open you could still get a, a few like chips and drinks and stuff like that and I didn't want that so I walked over to that subway there last night and had me a subway sandwich. Yeah. But this morning we just took off and now we're almost to Minot. And from there we only got about uh, an hour and three quarters up to the border. And now this truck is passing me here, so. Alright. Good luck to you. Yeah, so we're gonna go to Minot and have a good breakfast, I think. And then in about an hour and 45 minutes, we should be at the border. Then we'll be in Canada. Yeah. I think it's another seven hours or something like that from the border to uh, Madison Hat, so. We got a good drive to do yet. I mean, we've only done an hour and a half so far, so. Yeah. 
So that's scheduled to Minot and have some good breakfast. Well guys, we are coming into Minot, North Dakota. Yeah, so we are as well, 15 miles. Just about a mile away from the truck stop. And then we'll go in there and have some good breakfast. Remember guys, a few uh, I guess a month ago, yeah, almost a month ago, when we went to Seattle, we was coming in to, uh, to Minot a little bit further down the road, but uh, we will go by there a little bit later. Yeah, we were coming in on the uh, west side of uh, Minot, close by the Flying J. This is on the east side of Minot. I'll go to the next entrance there. Here on the left, that's the truck stop we're going to go to. I've had breakfast here before and it's really good. So we're going to go in here again. Yeah. Anyways, let's go in there and uh, we'll see you guys a little bit later. This is it guys. We are coming up to the border here very very shortly. Yes, and then we'll be in Saskatchewan. That is right. You just gotta go through Portal, North Dakota. Once we are here, it's a very little town. And then you will be at the border. You already see a few trucks. Sometimes this has been a long, long lineup up to here even, to the border. Which that doesn't appear to be the case today. Looks like there is a few trucks ahead of me, but uh, nothing crazy it looks like. So that's always good. That's always very good. Got the duty free here uh, to the right. There you see this truck here to the right. And then next thing we know we're at the border. Yeah. Basically where that truck just came out of, that's where he comes out of the United States border. And that's it. it. Almost looks like this guy is going in to uh, cancel his inbound it looks like. so. I guess I'll be pulling up to the other guy there. Well, I guess he didn't realize it that this guy was stopping here. He shouldn't be parked here, but he could have parked in the parking area over there, I guess. But he decided not to do it. Anyways, let's shut the cameras off and we'll see you guys on the other side. That's it, guys. We are in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Meters. Slide right on Highway 39. Yeah, we are in Canada. Look at the beautiful weather out here today. Just absolutely gorgeous. Continue yep. on this road for 38 kilometers. All right, we got 38 kilometers to go to Estevan, Saskatchewan, I believe it is. Speed limit reduced ahead. Yeah. Speed warning. Yep. We got 674 kilometers to go to our delivery, which is about seven hours driving. Maybe a little more depending on how everything goes, cities, towns. Mind you, we don't really have to go through too many towns. Not too many that we have to slow down for anyways. Let's get our glasses on so we can see good. Speed, photo enforcement and work zones. Oh, okay, fine, it's double. That's what it said on top of it, yeah. Well, that's okay though, you know. A lot of people are speeding through construction zones, which I don't like at the beginning, you know. In the first place. You should never speed in a construction zone, that's dangerous. Well, you should never speed, period, in my opinion, anyways, right? Although I have done it, I'm guilty of it too. Yes, sir, Bob. In my younger days, I did a lot of that. 
not anymore. Once I became a truck driver, I learned really quickly to follow speed limits and relax. I think once you become a truck driver, especially if you want to become a professional truck driver, you learn to deal with traffic and relax, be calm and heavy traffic. You know, you I, I think you have to, otherwise you're not going to be a safe driver out there, you know. That's that's just my opinion anyways. I mean I started with a company that was governed at 60 miles an hour. I couldn't go faster, no way. There was no way I could go faster and then here at Penners when I started with the owner operator he was governor at 65 mile an hour so couldn't do really any speeding unless you consider going through a town then you could do some speeding but I learned real fast to slow down and follow the speed limits and I don't really have the desire to go that fast anymore I try to I try really hard to follow the speed limits you know but not everybody does and I know this part of highway that I'm on right now is in my opinion a dangerous highway it really is I've been on this highway many times before and I always cruise at uh, 96 kilometers an hour which is 60 miles an hour 99% of the time so I'm cruising on the highway that's what I'm doing the odd time if I'm really in a hurry like when we went to go pick up our load in Houston then I'll put the hammer down but generally I I won't go faster than 60 unless you know if I'm passing somebody and let's say there's 70 or 75 mile an hour speed limit and I don't want to hold up traffic behind me or whatever I'll step on it and get around it and be right back to cruise but that doesn't happen very often because most people go faster than me right but where, where, where I'm getting to is uh, on this highway there's a lot of people that don't have patient, uh, the patience to, uh, to drive, drive on this highway and because I'm going like a little bit slower than they like to go, they will sometimes try to pass me, you know, in a dangerous situation where vehicles are coming from the front, they're just trying to get around me. And, whatever you know sometimes uh, if I see it on time uh, I will uh, slow down you know let them pass safely but it has happened to me where I gone around the curve and a guy is passing me well I think that's never a good idea I think that's not safe passing in my opinion anyways I had that happen I believe last year at the beginning of my YouTube career and you can go back and watch the video. I did get a lot of negative uh, comments on it, a lot of hate on that video. A lot of guys were hating me, but they didn't really see the whole point of me. I was, in my opinion, I was in the right. I mean, that guy was trying to pass me uh, around the curve, and I didn't, I didn't notice it on time. I, I really didn't expect him to pass me like that, you know. And all of a sudden I notice he's passing me and I'm like right at the curb and there's people coming and he basically came into my lane without being fully passed by me yet, you know. Forced not only me off the road, also forced a couple of four-wheelers off the road and uh, a lot of people were saying I should have slowed down and this and that. Well, I did. I did slow down and... Uh, once I noticed that he was passing me, I was starting to slow down. But uh, you also got to understand a semi truck with, you know, 45,000 pounds in the box, it can't be just slowing down just like that, you know, that doesn't happen. And uh, a lot of people were calling me names and talking bad, bad about me on that video. And you can go and then read those comments, they're still there. I've deleted a few that were really nasty, but most of them are still there. And, uh, hey, I don't care what these people still got to say about me if I put that video up there. I just, I thought it was dangerous what he did and I figured I'd show that part of trucking as well. Stuff that we have to deal with on a regular basis, you know. I mean, 
mean that doesn't happen very often but it does happen quite a few times on this particular highway so don't be surprised if that does happen again today because it is is known to be happening on this highway more than anywhere else I've noticed and uh, that's just the way it is but anyways enough of that we're just cruising along and uh, hoping for the best having an awesome day I am coming into Moose Jaw right now and I'm gonna make me a pit stop up here yeah there we got a flying J in here yep they do have a flying J in here and we're gonna go get ourselves some go-go juice yeah that's right you know what else we're going to do? I feel like having a shower. I think I'm going to go in here and have me a shower right away. And then we'll hightail uh, our butt out of here. Go to our delivery in Madison Hat. And you know what else happened over time? We got ourselves a reload out of the same place that we're delivering to. We just do a trailer swap in there. Turn right. I just gotta come all the way up to here so I can see if people are coming or not. Let me make our stop. Anyways, we got ourselves a reload right. out of there. And we will be going home from there. Yes. So we got a lot of things planned. Planned for when we are at home. And a lot of stuff that we gotta take care of. In order to operate as a business, turn left on 9th Avenue. So let's see if we can fuel her up here somehow. I don't know why this pickup truck parked right here, so it's kind of hard to actually get right into a spot here somewhere, you know. It looks like he's gonna be moving. Mm, looks like every other pump is full. No pump left there, so I guess we just gonna have to move into this position up here somewhere. Anyways, I don't know if this one or that one or which one. But we're just gonna have to move into one position. And hope for the best, I guess. No matter what, we're behind somebody, <laughs> right? So, anyways, let's uh, go ahead and wait our turn and we'll fill up and we'll see you guys a little bit later I got me a shower now we're feeling pretty darn good fuel the truck up man this road is rough moly that is just terrible but I guess it's a service road so what can you expect right but we are just leaving the moose jaw here right now, Saskatchewan that is. Yeah. We got well about four and a quarter hours the left to uh, turn left on Madison Avenue and then turn right in 40 meters. And now we'll do our trailer switch and we'll see if we decide to come back a little bit yet or not. We'll see about that. Anyways, let's get back on the big highway here and uh, get us uh, over to Madison Hat. We are in Madison Hat, Alberta. Yes, sir, Bob, we are. We're at the truck stop right now, actually. So, yeah. I already finished doing my trailer swap and filled out all my paperwork, and uh, I'm ready to go to bed. Yeah, so we are all good to go for tomorrow. So we can just put her in gear tomorrow. Well, I guess do our pre-trip first and then uh, put her in gear and put the hammer down to go home. Yeah. So let's not waste any time. Let's go to bed and let's get up early tomorrow and go home. It's gonna be a long day tomorrow it is a long day it's 1115 kilometers according to rj to go home so uh let's go to bed 
and we will see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for tomorrow. It's time to get going. It's time to move on. Put this behind me. That day is